The cooler months in the southern highlands of New South Wales are just magic, and it's the perfect day to visit a local winery. John, found oh, you. G'day, Graham. How are things? Yeah, good, <laughs> great, man. Wow. What an incredible joint this is. Yeah. It's like a grand manor in the middle of the Aussie bush, isn't it? Yeah. You see, the boutique fifth chapter winery doesn't just produce some very fine Pinot, Sauvignon Blanc and Shiraz. It also has some of the loveliest formal gardens in the country. How big is the property? The property's 100 acres. And the garden? Yeah. The garden's around seven probably more like 10 now because it, it seems to get bigger every year. Very good head gardener. Oh. Look at the quality of those roses and the, and the oh, foliage. That is a good spot here. You've also got some potted colour, little dwarf snapdragons over there. Yeah, well, they're, they're something we've put in now. They'll go through winter and they'll be a good show for spring. Love to have a look in the rest of the garden. Be my guest. Thanks a lot. Cheers. In front of the house and beyond the rose garden is an amazing alley or avenue which leads you on to a beautiful vista out into the landscape. It's lined with this really tight hedge of boxes, but when you get to the first set of stairs, it changes. This is a dwarf potosterum called Green Pillar. And then you've got these exploding columns of Italian cypress, beautifully tightly clipped. On either side, it's lined with Japanese cherries. They're in their full autumn glory. And it's all leading to a beautiful ornamental pond featuring this elegant Victorian fountain. As you come through the precision Leighton Green Cypress Hedge, it opens out into a glorious French parterre garden. If anything, the hedges are a little bit higher than they are in France. But I think here, they are even more precisely pruned. In fact, all of the maintenance is really impeccable. The conifers and certainly the buxus cones, the topiaries are stunning quality. Around the outside are a beautiful collection of standard white iceberg roses. In the centre is a very interesting variegated cordyline, but what really sets it off is that the urn is planted with Dichondra Silver Falls, which just spills out, creating a really dramatic centrepiece for the whole garden. The work is brilliant. It's an absolute masterpiece. Surrounding the entire garden is an incredible hedge, over a metre wide and a couple of metres tall. It's Camellia Sasanqua, two old varieties. The white one is Mino Yuki, and the double pink is Jennifer Susan. They've got similar growth habits, which is a really good tip when you're selecting plants for a hedge. So when you've pruned both sides, you've actually walked over a kilometre. That's going to keep you busy on the weekends. Yes, it's a Japanese garden, complete with a little red bridge. Of course, white gravel is essential, but instead of having clipped azaleas, they've gone for clipped buxes. Interestingly, these little fellows here are not clipped. This is their natural shape, the Alberta cypress from Canada. But to keep it really Japanese, the maples, and look at the colour. They're just loving the cooler nights and the clear blue skies and a water feature. The water pouring down from the mountains like a giant river and then coming into calmer waters down by the seaside. Very traditional and it really works. But just to show that the owners and the head gardener have got an Aussie sense of humour, they've clipped some of the cypress into a Buddha and a couple of funny rabbits. I love it. A truly wonderful garden, a hidden gem, absolutely stunning.